Okay, today we're going to be looking at lessons three and lessons four for module three, which are real world positive and negative numbers in zero and the opposite of a number. You're going to find that today is very, 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 very similar to what we worked on yesterday. Today is a nice solid review of everything that we did yesterday. Okay, which is nice since there's like three of you here. Okay. Okay, so let's get started. Take a look at this picture here. Integers are part of our real world every day. Okay, what were the examples we used yesterday of integers? <clears throat> and on your homework, it's like the buzz, one of them is like the big buzzword right now. Everybody's talking about the temperature and how cold it is. So temperatures is one example of positive and negative numbers. What was the other example yesterday? Real world solutions of positive and negative. Somebody's birthday. What did he get for his birthday? Money. So your bank account, adding and subtracting and so on. Okay? Here's another example, and this should tie in nicely to what you're working in science right now. You're learning about elevation and air pressure. <clears throat> So here, let's take a look at this. We've got somebody sailing on the water. <clears throat> You've got somebody scuba diving below sea level. That's me training for my triathlon, swimming away down there. Except I don't use them on the tank. And you've got somebody hiking way up on top. I don't hike. So if we had to look at this as if it was a number line with different elevations, the water line, what would that be considered on a vertical number line? What would that be? Like that would be our zero. And anything above sea level is considered all, right, all of our positives. And everything below sea level, where this guy is swimming, would be our negatives because it's below the zero. So it's just another real world example of where we see positive, negative, and zero numbers. So now you're going to, in your book, come up with integers for the following examples. If the diver was at 30 feet below sea level and the sailor is at sea level and the hiker is two miles above sea level. So right now I want you to write integers for each for the diver, the sailor, and the hiker. Put them all down and let's Come up with our answers. We're on page nine right now. Page nine, number one. So you should be writing these answers down. What are the integers? What represents the diver? How would you write that as an integer? The diver? The diver is below the zero. So it would be negative 30 because he's below sea level. Remember, this is the zero, and it's below the zero. That's negative. What about the, the sailor? That's zero. And what about the hiker? That would be positive 2 because he's above zero. Right? Any questions on this? Right. 10,560. Because they really want to confuse you, so they give you two different numbers to work with. All right. Any questions on that? Think pretty straightforward. All right. Use an appropriate scale to graph each of the following situations on the number line to the right. Also, write an integer to represent both situations. Well, before I go in and start throwing numbers on this number line, what do I have to think about first? I don't know, should I just start at 100, 200, 300, and so on? Where am I going to get information that's going to help me decide how to label my number line? In this yeah, let's first go see what integers I need to plot. So how would I write that a hiker is 15 feet above sea level? Yep, positive 15. And how would I write that a diver is 20 feet below a sea level? Minus 20. So I know that my scale has to go from minus 20 to 15. All right, put your pencils down for a minute. 
What uh, scale should I use? Remember, there's different scales on your graduated cylinders in science. Right? You had the bigger ones had different scales than the smaller. Some went by 0.5, some went by 2, some went by 1. Your triple beam balance, different thermometers, all have different scales. So how can we figure out, do we have enough slashes to count by 1? No. So what do you think we should try? Hi. Somebody said in 6 periods to use the greatest common factor of both numbers as an interval, as a suggestion. I thought that was a good idea. It's not going to always work, because if we did this by fours, are we going to hit 15? No. Fours wouldn't work, because 15 won't show up on our number line. I was just thinking great Yeah, so that would work. So we're going to start with zero in the middle. So let's just watch. So if we got me, let me sketch it out first, see if it fits, okay? So let's see, I need negative 20, negative 15, negative 10, negative 5, 5, 10, 15, 20. A lot of times you'll see number lines that start and stop at the same point, like it'll go 5 to 5, or I said not to write this down. I said you're watching. Are we comfortable with this number line? Is it reasonable? What's that word? Remember how many times did I tell you I'm coming to your store when you're shopping because you're giving me $100 off a $40 sweater. You have to think about what's reasonable, what makes sense. What do negative numbers represent? The diver is 20 feet below sea level. So here's the diver swimming. And here is the hiker walking above sea level. Does that picture make sense? It makes sense that this guy is swimming up here and this guy is walking down here. So this guy is swimming up here and this guy is hiking down here. What did we talk about yesterday when we talked about our vertical number line? What goes above the zero? Positive numbers have to go above the zero. What goes below the zero? The negative. negative numbers. So now is there something somebody wants to tell me about my number line? If these are all in the wrong spot. So now you can make your, see that was the reason why I told you not to number your paper yet. So 20. 15, 10, 5, 0, negative 5, negative 10, negative 15, negative 20. So now here is my diver and here is my hiker. You have to think about what is reasonable. What do integers mean? What are the integers representing? So you have to think about reasonable answers, what it is that we're working with. Okay? So now everybody should have this label. Good? At first, when you did like that, I'm like, let's do the teacher, I'm like, wait a second. But if like, something doesn't make sense, even though I'm the teacher, you should still ask questions if it's not making sense. <coughs> because sometimes I do make mistakes. That one I did make that mistake on purpose, I'll be honest. But there are other mistakes I don't make on purpose. So if something confuses you or doesn't seem right, that's where you have to raise your hand and politely ask the question. Because one, that's the only way you're going to learn, and two, maybe I did make a mistake. It's like totally rare and like never ever ever happens, but still, just in case. Alright, it's hot in here, I've got a headache, you're going to have Alright, any other questions on this? For each statement, there are two related statements, I and I, I, I. Determine which related statement is expressed correctly, I and I, I, and circle it. Then correct the other related statements so that both parts I and II are stated correctly. This is exactly what you did on your homework last night. Okay? So A, a submarine is submerged 800 feet below sea level. So that's your statement. Which is written correctly, I or II? Which is the depth of the submarine is negative 800 feet below sea level. Or 800 feet below sea level can be represented by the integer negative 800. I or I I I I Captain. 
Aye, aye is correct. We don't have to say it twice. We said it once, they said it twice. You wouldn't say he's late and never on time, because that's the same thing. Ooh, I'm cold and freezing. Well, I kind of figured out you were freezing when you said you were cold, okay? You don't have to say it twice. Just say it once. So, for B, the elevation of a coral reef with respect to sea level is given as negative 250 feet. So, i.e., the coral reef is 250 feet below sea level, or i.e., the depth of the coral reef is negative 250 feet below sea level. Everybody? I. Because I, 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 you said that already. I, 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 enough. Stop repeating yourself. So, the correct answer is I. Because I am always right. Uh -huh. <clears throat> okay. We're actually going to transition into lesson four right now. Okay. All of problem set three is your homework. It'll take you no time at all. So lesson four right now, we're trying to change eleven, and we're actually looking at example one in the middle of the page. Okay, everybody point to example, not exercise, example one right next to the ring in your binder. Mm -hmm. Locate the number eight and its opposite on the number line. Well, here's eight. And what is its opposite? Everybody? Negative eight. Negative eight. But what do they both have in common with zero? What do they both have in common with zero? They are the same distance. In this case, it's eight units. Eight units. They are both the That's what makes them opposites. They're the same distance from zero. That's what makes them opposite. So the opposite of eight is negative eight. The opposite of negative 8 is positive 8, okay? Because they're both the same distance from 0. We good with that definition? So they want us to locate the opposites of the numbers on the number line. So what's the opposite of 9? Negative 9, so that's A. What's the opposite of negative 2? 2. 2, so that's B. What's the opposite of 4? So that's C. What's the opposite of D? Negative 7, the opposite is? 7. seven. Okay, so that's how you should have been number line numbered, labeled, lettered, identified, marked up. Okay, you ready? Write the integer that represents the opposite of each situation. Now here's where a lot of people are forgetting. You also have to explain what the zero means. So there's two parts to this. The opposite and what zero means. So 100 feet above sea level. So what would the opposite be? What's the opposite of 100 feet above? Negative 100. What does the zero represent in this example? Zero represents sea level. Thirty-two degrees below zero. You should be writing this down in your notes. 30 degrees below zero. So what's the opposite? 32. Yes, positive 32. So what would zero represent? Zero represents zero degrees. A withdrawal of $25. So what would be the opposite? Sure. Does it say the above sea level for um, number one, for A, and then it says below 
Right, well, we had to write the opposite. The directions have to be opposite. Withdrawal of 25, what's the opposite? And what would zero represent? Mm, it would. It would. Zero, but also in this case, we're talking about withdrawal and deposits. It would actually represent no change. No, not that you're broke. No change in deposits or withdrawal. Did they spell it right? Girls. Okay. Let's look at example two. Maria decides to take a long walk along Central Avenue to purchase a book at the bookstore. On her way, she passes the furry friend's pet shop and goes in to look for a new leash for her dog. The furry friend's pet shop is seven blocks west of the bookstore. After she leaves the bookstore, she heads east for about seven blocks and stops at Ray's Pet Shop to see if she can find a new leash for a better price. Which locations, if any, are the furthest from Maria while she is at the bookstore? So if we're talking about while she's at the bookstore, and we have to label all of this on that number line, what do you think I should put down as my zero, as my starting point? Yeah, so right in the middle, I'm going to put down as my zero the bookstore. And it says that the furry friends is seven blocks west. And it says that Ray's is seven blocks east. But now, which is the furthest from the bookstore? Which is the furthest, Ray's or Furry Friends? Which is the furthest? They're the same. Because, they, because Ray's and Furry Friends are the same distance away from zero, what can we say? about those two numbers. Because they're both, God bless you, the same, that's not what we could say about them, but God bless you. What can we say? They're both seven blocks away from the pet store. So if they're both the same distance from the pet store, what are they, Jennifer? Opposites, that's right. Negative seven and seven are opposites. And the zero represents the bookstore. Okay? Go ahead and try 4, 5, and 6 now on your own. On a number line, locate and label a credit of $15 and a debit for the same amount from a bank account. What does zero represent in this situation? So let's look at how we'll do the first one together. The zero is going to represent no change, okay? So the zero represents no change in the balance. So if we have um, a debit of $15, and over here we have a credit of $15, it looks like fives would be a good interval for this number line. So there's our debit of $15 and our credit of $15. Remember I told you my son's sweatshirt came in dirty, so I returned it, and they said that they would credit my account $15. They were adding $15 back into my account. On a number line, locate and label 20 degrees Celsius below zero. So here's my zero, 20 degrees below zero and 20 degrees Fahrenheit above zero. 
So it looks like we can use um, intervals or a scale of 10 for making that number line. And here we have another science connection. Protons have a positive charge. We're going to learn about this later in the year. Protons have a positive charge. So write an integer to represent five protons. So how would you write that? Yep, positive five. Now, electrons have a negative charge. So how would you write that you have three electrons? What would represent that? What would represent that? Mm -hmm. Yep. Exactly. So to bring it all together, the relationship between any number and its opposite when plotted on a number line is what? What do we say about any number and its opposite on a number line? Exactly. Same distance away from zero, but on opposite sides. How would you use this relationship to locate the opposite on a number line? So if you know that 1 is 10 spaces away from 0, how would you find its opposite? You would go 10 spaces in the other direction. Okay? What about finding the opposite of 0? What did we say the opposite of 0 was, everybody? 0. zero. That's right.